Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this two-part video, you should be able to describe how to determine the water of crystallisation of a compound by titration. Now I should point out that some students find this quite tricky. If you haven't already, then I would strongly recommend that you watch my video on how to carry out a titration. OK, as we've seen in the last two videos, many compounds contain water molecules within the crystal structure. This is called water of crystallisation. A good example is the compound hydrated sodium carbonate. Now, if we know the molar mass of this compound, then we can calculate the value of the water of crystallisation. And we saw how to do that in the first video on water of crystallisation. So how do we determine the molar mass? Well, imagine I have a certain mass of hydrated sodium carbonate. If I know the number of moles that I have, then the molar mass equals the mass divided by the amount of substance in moles. Now we can determine the mass of our hydrated sodium carbonate using a balance. And we can determine the amount of substance in moles by titration. From these two values, we can determine the molar mass and the value of x. In this video, I'm going to take you through the method. And in the next video, I'll take you through the calculation. OK, so first we need to weigh a mass of our hydrated sodium carbonate. We need to use a balance with at least two decimal places. We start by placing an empty weighing boat onto the balance and then setting the balance to zero. Next, we add around 1.5 grams of hydrated sodium carbonate to the weighing boat. Now, the exact mass isn't critical as long as we know what that mass is. Next, we transfer the hydrated sodium carbonate to a beaker. Now, we reweigh the empty weighing boat and we calculate the mass of hydrated sodium carbonate that we added to the beaker. We do this because a very small amount of hydrated sodium carbonate will remain attached to the weighing boat. Next, we add around 100 centimetres cubed of distilled water to the beaker and we dissolve the hydrated sodium carbonate using a stirring rod. Now we use a funnel to transfer the solution to a 250 centimetres cubed volumetric flask. Now at this stage, there'll be traces of our compound on the beaker and the stirring rod. So now we rinse them with a small amount of distilled water and we transfer this rinse water into the volumetric flask. This way, we can be certain that we've transferred all of the compound into the flask. OK, now we slowly fill the volumetric flask with distilled water so that the level is just below the 250 cm3 mark. Then we use a pipette to add drops of distilled water until the bottom of the meniscus is on the 250 cm3 mark. And remember that we need to look with our eyes level with the meniscus. Finally, we place a stopper on the flask and invert it several times to ensure that the solution is mixed. OK, so now we've got a solution containing a known mass of our compound. So next, we need to determine the number of moles of compound. And we look at that in the next section. OK, so as we saw in the last section, we now have a known mass of our hydrated compound dissolved in a given volume of solution. We now need to work out the number of moles of our compound, and to do that we use titration. Our compound is hydrated sodium carbonate, and we're going to react this with hydrochloric acid. I'm showing you the equation for this reaction here. Now you'll notice that I've not included the water of crystallisation in this equation, and that's because it does not take part in the reaction. OK, we're going to use a pipette to transfer 25 centimetres cubed of our sodium carbonate solution to a conical flask. But before we do that, we need to rinse our pipette with distilled water. This removes any other chemicals that may be present in the pipette. Now at this point, our pipette will contain traces of distilled water. And because of this, we would not measure exactly 25 centimetres cubed of our sodium carbonate solution. That's because the traces of distilled water would contribute to the volume of liquid in the pipette. So now, we need to rinse the pipette with our sodium carbonate solution. This gets rid of any distilled water and allows us to measure an accurate volume. OK, so now we draw 25 centimetres cubed of our sodium carbonate solution into the pipette. Just like before, remember to read the solution with your eye level to the meniscus. Now we transfer the solution to a conical flask, which we previously rinsed with distilled water. Now I need to make a quick point here. If there are traces of distilled water in the conical flask, then this does not affect the titration. So it's not essential that we dry the conical flask. Next, we add four drops of the indicator methyl orange. 
We use methyl orange when we titrate a strong acid, such as hydrochloric acid, with a weak base, such as sodium carbonate. OK, next we take our burette and we rinse it with distilled water. Again, just like before, we now need to remove any traces of distilled water, as this would contribute to the volume in the burette and give us an inaccurate reading. So now we rinse our burette with hydrochloric acid. Finally, we use a funnel to fill the burette to the zero mark with hydrochloric acid. And remember to remove the funnel, as this can drip hydrochloric acid, which will give us inaccurate results. At this stage, we now place the conical flask onto a white tile and gradually add hydrochloric acid while swirling our solution. We're looking for methyl orange to turn from yellow to orange. Scientists call this the end point. Finally, we read the volume of acid that we added from the scale on the burette. And remember that we record all of our burette readings to two decimal places. Now, the volume of acid is called the titer, and we call our first titer our rough titer. Now we repeat the titration, but this time when we approach the end point, we need to add the acid drop by drop while swirling the solution. Again, once we reach the end point, we record our titer. This titer will be more accurate than the rough titer, since we added the acid more slowly near the end point. Now we repeat the titration until we achieve two concordant titers. Concordant titers are within 0.1 cm cubed. At this stage, we can stop the titration and analyse the results. In the next video, I'll show you how to analyse the results and calculate the value of the water of crystallisation.